Sorry, I'll leave it, leave it to you. Okay. Uh, okay, should we start? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to this talk. Uh, my name is Zhou Han. I'm a final year PhD student at uh, the University of Melbourne NLP Group. And I'm uh, supervised by Dr. Jehan Law and uh, Professor Trevor Cohen. And my topic today is uh, large language models better at storytelling. So here are the contents that we'll talk about today and uh, feel free to uh, interrupt me and ask if you have any question. So I will first introduce the paradigm shift for large language models. So at this moment, we are transitioning from the third paradigm, uh, pre-trained and uh, fine-tuned to the fourth one. Then I will talk about the uh, experimental studies, which includes the benchmarks, uh, comparison models, and uh, I will demonstrate some key findings, including the evaluation results and the strengths and the backwards of the current techniques. At last, if we still have time, we could have some discussion about uh, these uh, promising future directions I'm working on. So let's start with the uh, third paradigm, pre-train and fine-tune, which is still the main uh, stream approach for the most NLP tasks. But showing this figure, the idea is we uh, will first have a large language models that is pre-trained under large corpus. And then we will adapt it to fit downstream tasks such as classification or tagging or uh, generations by further fine-tuning it using different training uh, objectives. So I think the most uh, popular ones should be uh, mask language modeling for the encoding-based uh, model like uh, uh, BERT. And uh, next, the uh, sentence predictions for the decoding-based model like GPT-2. So this paradigm is also applied to story generation. And the most uh, naive approach is just to fine tuning on the story data set. So people uh, did this and find it works better compared to the previous models built on the LSTMs. And uh, there are, of course, some remaining uh, issues some simple ones like uh, uh, repetitive words or phrases. And these issues can be mitigated by just uh, tweaking the decoding approaches. But there are also uh, harder problems like topic drift or um, incoherence or common sense contradicting in the stories. So here are some examples we have when we just uh, purely fine tune a GPT model on the story data set. As you can see for the topic drift, the first two story, uh, the first two sentences in the story is talking about uh, the bar and the beer, and then suddenly uh, start to talk about the computer games. And uh, for the incoherence, the sentence here is uh, talking about uh, uh, vocab and feeling uh, refreshed. Is that big enough for you to see? Yeah. Okay, sorry to check. And then suddenly says, hey, fall asleep. So it's some incoherence in the story. And the third example is contradict the common sense. You can see the last uh, sentence. It says, Alice never went to bed without a spider again. So it looks to me it's uh, in, uh, inviting our common sense, right? Otherwise, it's a very uh, unique Alice. So luckily, uh, people propose some mitigations for each issues. For example, for to uh, topic drift, uh, we could add some storyline planning. And for the incoherence, we could learn uh, the inter-sentence relationship. And for the contradictor common sense, we could have some common sense reasoning. Um, can I ask a question? How about hallucination procedure in the next one, right? It, mm -hmm. it sort of Comments, uh, they did not contradict with common sense, but yeah. They make things up, uh, yeah. For example, when you have to generate something based on some evidence, right? Yeah, uh, it, you just want it to be um, within the evidence based on the knowledge base, but yeah. It just uses all the knowledge of the world, and yeah. 
I think that's an issue. So I, I think that's more an issue for other generation tasks like uh, summarization because the hilarization is a very big issue for the uh, summarization because all the content should be coming from the source. But actually for the story generation, it's different because the source do not provide all the information. You will actually need actual knowledge to make a better story. So I will talk about this later, actually it's in the slides. So thank you for the question. So, so we have some literature review. Here's a timeline of related works uh, for each approach. So here I have to mention the major work was done one year ago. So all models is a bit old now, and I believe there's more to add now. And uh, we uh, will briefly illustrate one represent from each category. So the first one is uh, storyline planning. So instead of generate the whole story together, they uh, divided them into multiple stages and generate incremental words and phrases at each stage. And the second one is uh, discourse learning, which they add two additional training objectives. One is to predict inter-sentence similarity and the other one is to distinguish between the original and the shuffled sentence order. So here's the task two and the task three here, uh, besides the original modeling task. And the third one is for common sense reasoning. They first uh, use the triples from uh, low-linked basis. They use heuristic rules to turn the triples uh, into these uh, sentences. And then they further fine tune the model on the transferred sentences to make it better at the at the sentence uh, at the common sense reasoning. And the last one, they combine storyline planning and the common sense reasoning. Um, the okay. Uh, can you uh, clearly define the task first, please? Because not many people might be familiar with the task. Okay. For the story generation, what exactly the input is that the topic that we want to generate? Uh -huh. And are there any other constraints? For example, right? The topic with um about say Mary and she go to university to study some object and then so on so forth. So what exactly the one? Okay, here the story generation uh, we are talking about here is just uh, the general one, which only provides the title and uh, to generate the stories. There's I no see. constraint, not I not see. constraint. Just, title, just one sentence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's a very good question to clarify. Yeah. And uh, so the last approach combines the storyline planning and the common sense reasoning. So the way they did it to, is to first generate keywords as plans, and then uh, they use these keywords to retrieve the uh, knowledge sentence from the knowledge base. And these sentences are then ranked by uh, this ranker, and the top ones is given to the story model to uh, help the generation. So those are the four uh, main approaches in the fine tune paradigm. So, so they don't provide the story plan. Uh, they first have yeah they don't provide the storyline. Uh, yeah. the the plan is okay. yeah the the plan is extracted from the title and then the the uh, plan is given to the knowledge base to extract the knowledge sentence. So the original uh input is just the the title yeah. Uh, can I have a question here? Uh, yeah. The GPT two here, here two different models or just one model? Uh, which one? I mean the GPT two here, right? Um, so the keywords predictor and also the conditional uh, generator. Uh, that's two different GPT two. Yeah, the one is two. Yes. They they train yeah. one to uh predict the keywords and and the other one to have the conditional to generate stories, yeah. So it means that in this model, there are three yes. LM here, right? GPT-2, two, two GPT-2, and yes. another one is the one. one. And another it's, bird to rank the knowledge. Yeah, it to computational, computational extensive, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So for the keyword predictor, is it also add a loss to it, or it's uh, just the uh, normal one without a... Um, uh, I mean, uh, for the keyword predictor, how, how they know whether the keyword is good or not? 
Yeah, they first use uh, so they use the uh, uh, algorithm to extract the most important words as keywords. So that's the uh, ground truth they have to train the predict model. Okay. Yeah. So that's sorry. So how long is the story? Yeah, it depends on the data sets. So we have shorter stories with like five sentences and some longer ones with more than like 20, 30 sentences. Okay. A lot too long. Yeah. See, see short story, um, some stories is like five hundred words, but yeah. So should we move on? Okay. So now we can move on to the new paradigm, which is usually called prompt based learning. And so instead of fine tuning and uh, fine tuning the pre trained models to fit different tasks. So now we adapt the task so that we can use the pre-trained models directly. And it becomes the heat topic recently. So that's why here is a fire here. So the question is, what makes prompt-based learning outstanding now, even though the idea is not uh, brand new, it's proposed a few years ago. So the simple answer might be the model size. So as time goes by, as you can see in the figures, uh, the size of models has increased from hundreds of millions to hundreds of billions. And now uh, more companies have provided their own models. So I assume many of you have uh, heard or personally used the uh, Dell E2 here for the uh, image creation or the ChatGPT2 where you can probably use it for a lot of tasks. And uh, so this leads to our questions. Are these uh, large language models better at storytelling with just a few short uh, learning compared to the previous fine tuned approaches? Since uh, here are some work showing fine tuned approaches are still better in other generation tasks like question answering or summarization. And also, some work shows GPT 3 can generate uh, good stories, but there's no comparison between the, these two paradigms on story generation. So that's why we want to bring this uh, work as a comparison between this one, uh, hundreds billion pre-trained models plus uh, fine-tune uh, plus uh, free short learning with the hundreds of millions models plus fine-tune. So to do that, we uh, generate stories based on the same title. And then we conduct uh, uh, human and uh, automatically evaluations. So here are the models we compare. We chose GPT-3 DaVinci uh, 001, as it has 175 uh, billion parameters. So I have to say that uh, that was the most uh, advanced model at the time we did our experiments. And now, of course, we have better models like uh, GPT-3.5, which is the third version of DaVinci. And also we have ChatGPT, and they might give us better performance. And for the fine-tuned models, I chose the one I just talked about before. And I we also add a, a fine-tuned part for comparison. And for data sets, we use the two common uh, story data sets, the rock story, which is five sentence uh, common sense story. And uh, writing prompts is more creative fictional stories. And we follow the previous work to cut to uh, just the first 10 sentence. And to include uh, longer ones, we use the same daily mail. Uh, it was the new stories, but has the very similar narratives. So uh, to make it consistent, we use the top P sampling uh, decoding approaches with P equals 0 0.95 for all the models. And we generate 800 stories for ROC, 1,000 for WP, and 600 for CNN. And uh, we first uh, conduct human evaluation, which we include uh, crop source uh, annotators from uh, Amazon Mechanical Turk and the in-house uh, human evaluations from our friendly colleagues. And some of them are even uh, friendly enough to come here for me. So thank you very much. And we assess these five uh, common story quality aspects like fluency, coherence, relatedness, uh, logicality and uh, interestness. Of course, interestness is very uh, subjective. 
So for each group, we sample 20 different titles for each data set. And each story is judged by three annotators and we just uh, average their scores for each aspect. So in the end, here's are the numbers we, of results we have for each data set. So let's look uh, at these results. So the first uh, thing we find is we have consistent trend between two different groups and the titles. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Can Sorry. I ask a basic question first? How did you find two uh, the, 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 the smaller models? What form of training data is? Is that the pair of topic? Mm -hmm. and then a story that given written and you use us to train the model? Yeah, so basically we follow the same setting from previous paper. And some we didn't, we just ask them to give us the generations. That's why, that's why we have a, the, the number here is not very big because that's the only number they provide us. No, 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 this, this is fine. But how exactly, because you compare the big uh, pre-trained model, uh -huh. the short ride, uh -huh. the fine tuned one, the question is how exactly did you do the fine tuning? How exactly do I do the fine tuning with? Yes, you have 100 uh, million uh, fine tuned model, right? uh -huh. and you fine tune that model, right? Oh, no, 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 for the for the uh, 100 billion model, you mean? The... No, 100 billion. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, just using the simple next sentence prediction, uh, the the approaches. I see. But yeah, without any additional. Incorporate the question into consideration. The question of choice. Um, like, like yes, I like that. Um, like instruction. Yeah. So was it like title on one side and? Yeah, it's just the uh, encoder decoders. The title is encoder, and then uh, the the the. the you just decode the story. Yeah. Some of them we did. Some of some of them they provide the generations. So we just use their generations. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Some people also publish the model. So we just run the inferences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just the, the data we shown here, the rock WP and the CN. Yeah, so, so the first uh, thing we find is we have consistent trend between two different groups and titles. And the one thing I need to mention is that uh, our colleagues seems gave slightly higher scores, which also makes sense because even though we did not mention they are machine generated stories, but I assume our colleagues would not think I'm just, uh, I just certainly ask them to judge random online stories. So. And they are all dealing with NLP models. So I don't think they have a very high expectation from models. So they, that's why they gave slightly higher uh, scores. And uh, six, sorry, oh, can, can oh. I? Um, so you mean the the colleagues mean that the annotators, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The in house annotators. So the scores it seems to be slightly higher than the online annotators. Yeah, I'm just a bit curious about that, right? Um, yeah. So the annotator is kind of like student or uh, lecturer or what, right? So, so it's mean that it, it it's subjective, right? Um, yeah, I think how they try how they them to understand the story, um, how they do the evaluation. There's any guideline for that or something? Yeah, we we have the same guidelines. Just uh, we have we provide uh, some examples. We provide the uh, rubrics to to uh one to five scores. Like how what's what's the standard for the one for the uh, score one? What's the standard for the score five? So we provide the same uh standards to both cross sourcing and the in house annotators. But mm -hmm. uh, so we assume the reason is because our colleagues have the this knowledge in their mind, like they know, they, they think the machine stories should not be that good. So they might the, just- uh, The in-house uh, I think, uh, I think generally it's higher just uh, for some, yeah. some aspect it might be lower, but generally it's higher than the crowd source. Uh, so to hide the model, right? Can you give example? Yeah. No, I didn't uh, provide anything. I'm just saying judge this model. I'm just saying our colleagues, they have this, even though you didn't tell them to uh, judge story from machines, but they just assume you, you just uh, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, because they know my topic, so it's not. Yeah. So. Yeah, we have we have uh, automatically metrics as well. So I will show later. Yes. What is the sample size for ground and internal What is the sample size? How many external elevators? Internal uh, we have fifteen internal one. Uh, fifteen colleagues, and uh, I don't know how many uh Amazon Turkey we have because that's some people just do one task. So I don't know how how exactly how many people are there. Yeah. Do you give the same titles for each of the models and ask people to yeah. give these other five options? Uh, no, it's just that we gave them, we randomly shuffle the uh, stories just as, just to uh, make it less biased. So so cross-sourcing and in-cause are actually uh, evaluated on different. Yeah, different, uh, uh, different titles. So that's why it uh, makes uh, it, uh, the, the it makes the results more robust because even though the titles are different, we still find the same trend between uh, models. And, and the GPT-3, for example, is well known to be sensitive to the font size. Yeah. Like the different font size. Yeah, that's uh, one of the limitations is we just use the most uh, simple prompt. So how do you the title? The font here is the title. The prompt here is not just a title. So we first gave three examples, the, the uh, title one, story one, title two, story two, title three, story three. And we gave the title and the, 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 the title and, the, and the gave the story to let, let it to complete the story. Do you always use seventy three examples or random? Uh, for the, so we randomly sample three examples and uh, generate the stories with the same prompt. But for different data set, we have the different uh, the prompt. So for the same data set, we the, yeah. same, same. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but but the, the story will be long, right? And then if you provide GPT-3 with the uh, three story samples, yeah. so it's mean that your prompt will be very long. My prompt? Is it true? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so for the uh, rock and the WP, we provide three examples because the the story is, is uh, uh, the story is light uh, is light, uh, is shorter. But for CNN, we we only give two uh, examples because the because it's very long. Yeah. And so you haven't really looked at those virtual teams before, right? So you didn't try to give a single title. Uh, we did, but we, we did, uh, just in the primary study, we did the zero shot. It also looks good, but, but we want to make the generator story looks like uh, your, the ones you have in your data set. So we gave some examples too, because even though they can generate something, but it does not know what you want them to generate. So that's why we try the so because we mix it up a different style. Yeah, different style. Yeah. So you want to right. you want to uh the model to learn the style. So I will give some examples. Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a that's a good thing. That, that, yeah, that's a good question because we just assume we just assume the for the for this one for rock is more common sense style story for WP is more creative for CNN is uh more new new style. So we just think think is uh, the the same style in the one data set. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For the online annotator play to not have, they, they did not realize that the, the, the story is generated by the machine. Right? We did not provide this information, yes. but I. Yeah, so, so we, we did, we did, we, to pick the annotators, we did that, we did that first. So we have some randomly, uh, we have some stories from machine from very bad machine from uh just the two gram models to generate some 
uh, bad stories and we have human stories. We gave them to see if they are good workers who really annotate your stories. So if their uh, accuracy is really high, so we re-invite them for the real task. So we do not just uh, invite everyone for the, for the task here. So actually, as you said, we did not provide information like it's machine generated story, but some people assume it's lately. There's one worker emailed me asking me, are you doing uh, artificial intelligence? Why, are, why, why do you want us to annotate this data? I was like, yeah, I cannot tell you. <laughs> so let's move on, I guess. So since the conclusion from these two groups is the same, so let's just focus one on one. So we can see the other funding we find is GPT-3 is uh, significantly better than fine-tuned models and almost unpaired with the human writing ones. A couple of comments here. Um, first is that um, the paper from Microsoft showing that uh, the, the uh, zero shot or two shot from, uh, from GPT-3 model uh, and fine-tuning the smaller model and it, it it put it with like an order of magnitude size. So because GPT three hundred seventy five billion mm -hmm. data, right? Then if you fine tune a seventeen roughly seventeen uh, billion parameter model, then mm -hmm. you achieve similar performance. Mm -hmm. And in here, um, because GPT three is really big, and what you give is a fast model of four hundred something million parameter, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember the data we used to, to find to is very small, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a couple of hundred, right? Oh, no, that's that's the generation. The 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 fine tune is bigger than that. It's also uh, sorry, it should be like a ten more than one hundred k something the, right. for the training. Yeah, it 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 uh it uh decent size then, but uh. But even that, uh, the size of base model is actually yeah very small. So I, I I understand. So if you want uh, if you believe the pa that paper from Microsoft, right? Yeah. Then I would expect you to find to have seventeen billion. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the same. Yeah. Let let that's the same we want to analyze an analyze here. So should I move on? Yeah. Okay. So okay. Sorry. The issue I'm thinking now, right? Okay, this is something I'm not too weird. Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I will talk about it later. Yeah, thank you for the question. So that's the next funding. So the other funding is we find uh, for different aspects. So Generally, for fluency, coherence are uh, easier for model. For relatedness, logicality, and interestness are uh, harder. So the next, sorry, the next thing is we can see the rock is the easy, easy one because it's very short. Uh, just like you answer your question, the WP is harder than CNN, even though the length is shorter. So we shall soon. Uh, it is because the writing prompts is a data set crowded from the online platform Reddit, and it's much more open-ended and uh, needs more further knowledge to generate a good story. So, which we will uh, further analyze. So, back to the uh, automatic evaluations. So, there are two major aspects to measure, which is quality and uh, diversity. So, basically, the idea uh, state is to let the model generate uh, different uh, styles of high quality stories. And uh, we have the, uh, based on if you need the story reference as a metric, as a comparison, we have reference based uh, metrics and the reference free metrics. So here are the metrics I used in our uh, work. So they are common ones from literature. We have the string based matching, semantic based matching, and the learning based matching. We also have the text generation, and we use the story lens as a very rough indicator for story complexity. 
And for diversity, we have the reference-based matching and the reference-free matching. So here are the results we got from the uh, automatic metrics. So one finding is that we do not see there's a clear winner and uh, each metric seems to prefer different models. But uh, compared to the previous human evaluations, which is the gold standard for story evaluation. So I, I think there's a, uh, at least we find the recently proposed model-based approaches such as BERT score, BAT score, and the blue RT aligns better to the human evaluation. So after seeing these positive results of GPT-3, we conduct another comparison to see uh, why GPT-3 is better at storytelling uh, to fine tune the models. So the most naive answers would, uh, might be, of course, the size always matters. But what else? Uh, why does it, it not outperform the fine-tuned models on other generation tasks like summarization? So we have some thoughts about it. So based on the different properties of different tasks, for example, uh, basically there are some shared properties for the text generation, like fluency and coherence. And the least, uh, I think, can be improved by models with more parameters because it has better uh, context learning capability. But there are also some unique properties for each task. For example, for comparison task, you need to extract the most important information. And for transaction task, the information should be the same. But for creation tasks, such as the dialogue generation or story generation, it will need uh, additional information, which is usually not provided in the title. So for example, if we ask some native English speakers to generate a story for this given title, uh, I assume it might be slightly challenging for, uh, for them because they don't know uh, what this entity means. And uh, so it's, sorry. So it's like a fine tuned model, but 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 the certain knowledge is missing. So therefore, such love story might be generated, but that's not what what we want. But for if you ask anyone who knows a little bit about Chinese culture, and we have such background knowledge, uh, this guy is the one of the most famous Chinese pop singers. We have this knowledge embedded in our mind. Therefore, even though we usually do not write uh, English stories as good as our uh, English professors, but we have such certain knowledges, we can still produce better stories than them. So with this hypothesis, we dig deeper into our generations to see if it's true. And we did find a lot of examples where those fine-tuned models uh, misunderstand the story. So here is one example. Uh, Values, human values, knowledge is better. If you don't know, which mm. story Well, that's a good question. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not. <laughs> it, the data set is more complicated than that, but, but that, I, I agree, it's a good question. Yeah. So, so when you uh, give to Amazon, Amazon making do you have some prerequisites to for to for it to enter this text? Like uh, you need to know something or prove it. No, we didn't. Yeah, we didn't. But you say it's the search for right? How many tasks do you have done and also restrict the uh, countries that yeah. Countries. yeah, yeah, we are restricted into uh English speaking countries. Yeah. But but we didn't uh, uh, select like what kind of knowledge you have, but I, I think it's really hard to define. Yeah. So here's an example we find in uh, in, in, the, in the real examples in the data sets. So which is about uh, Kasulu, Katuhu, Katuhu. So you can say only GPT-3 understands the who is Katuhu, which is a fictional Lord cat, uh, characters and generates the good stories and that's why uh that's what happens right when you really don't understand titles not like the synthetic examples i showed before when you really understand the titles you are just uh, generate some random stuff which is uh 
even though it's fluent, but it's completely irrelevant. So that's one example. We have more examples in the paper if you want to read. Yeah. Yeah. Only GPT three understands pickup and two pickup from the airport. Yeah, he also shows the only GPT three understands pickup is pickup from airport. Other other models misunderstands is since it's pick up the cell phone or pick up uh, your cravings. So that's another thing. It's trained on batch data. Yeah. 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 That's one thing we could uh, uh, help uh, previous models to do better. That's one one of my future work we want to do. So, uh, after saying uh, GPT three is good, so one natural question would be, what issues does it still have? And we did find uh, some issues. For example, there's a lot of funding decoding errors GPT-3 has, such uh, certainly they start to generate Chinese or Japanese, even though you provide all contents in English, or sometimes the words are stick to together. And also uh, it intends to copy. Sometimes it copies from the given source. Sometimes it directly copies the whole uh, uh, given prompt. And the most interesting, I think, is sometimes it generates this uh, uh, profanity words, but it somehow knows to mask it out itself. So I think the other question we would sorry. No, no, no. It's 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 purely generated by GPT three. They just generate a B. I think it's the B word. <laughs> Like web to just throw them away and bring it to the end, or... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the the only thing you can for for these decoding issues, I think um there's not there's uh, not too much we can to do about it. It's just to resample. Yeah. So are you saying that you haven't really looked into how you can fix some of those human metrics? Um, because I mean, with GPT three, you can just like uh, use a different temperature, use different seed. Yeah. Uh, use different sort of keys of K or whatever parameters you use. Yeah. And every time it will just run a different output. Yeah. Uh, and some of those outputs will be consistent, some of them will be different. Uh, just here, give you an example about pickup, right? Yeah. In some cases, you could generate something about pickup from the airport, and some cases, you could generate something else, right? Uh -huh. uh, so the question is uh, how do you actually you know, evaluate whether the output is good or not? Or maybe, maybe, maybe um, uh -huh. you know, you can, you can generate multiple outputs and then you use some automated proxies for your human evaluation. Yeah. The yeah, that also makes sense. Yeah, we, we did not generate multiple uh, outputs for one uh, title. Yeah, it, it's, it might make sense to say if you generate multiples to save the for the words if it has multiple meanings, if it changes. Yeah, that's one good aspect to look into. It, 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 again, only when you have some, like, yeah, some of these uh, very... Uh, <laughs> very uh how to say that very damn issues yeah so so move on the the other question we would ask to uh, we would like to ask is is it a create creative writing or is it just a paraphrase from its training uh, source and uh, we did find or we did some preliminary parameter check and here are some results so we first check on authenticate, authenticate, which is the common uh, plagiarism checking software we use to check students' assignments. And it looks like the results is not that bad here. And we, for the detailed check, we randomly sample 10 stories from writing prompts and the CNN. And we just search the keywords online. And we find for WP, it looks like it's fine, but for CNN, seven out of 10 are paraphrased from the true uh, online news. So here are the examples. So as you can see, uh, for the titles, we did not provide the names or the charges, but the stories they generate the, because this is a, uh, something related to the true news. So they just 
do the information retrievals and uh, give the disclose the name and the charges to you. So we think this might cause some privacy leak issue. And here are some limitations of this work. So we only, uh, like you just suggested, we only use the uh, simplest prompt and uh, we uh, just to, and the text DaVinci 001. So now we have stronger models and uh, prompt engineering is the heat topic. So you can provide better examples, better order of the examples and better instructions to make it uh, generate better results. But uh, as we can see, we already show even the simplest approach uh, demonstrates the very prom promising results and uh, outperform the previous fine-tuned models. So the uh, the better approach won't change our conclusion as well. And uh, here's what we can learn from uh, from the talk is we should all try to use the new paradigm at least for story generation. And the, the way we can do is to decompose the story generation process into multiple stages and make full use of the available APIs to achieve uh, each subtask. For example, we have storyline planning, writing from the plans, revising, and sometimes we need to uh, reason which part is wrong. And uh, we can use editing as well. There's a lot of APIs we can use, so we, can, we need to make full use of it. And the other thing is we already see the model-based uh, evaluations works better. So this means the stronger language models can be both better story generators and the evaluators. So this leads to the current paper I'm working on right now. So which is the automatic story uh, evaluations. So here, um, do we still have time? Yeah, so we will talk about our uh, directions right now which we have story, a story evaluation and the knowledge distillation and the privacy leak analysis. So previously results already show we need better story evaluation metrics. So that's why uh, that's what I'm working on right now. So let's review the progress of the evaluation trends. So we go from the string matching with the reference. We have this uh, matrix and we have the semantic matching. And uh, then we have the story discriminator are trained to distinguish from the good stories and the less good stories. And then we have the uh, generative likelihood. Uh, we can directly use the likelihood to assess the stories. So here are the trend for the uh, approach of the evaluation metrics. And also, uh, the other thing is people start to realize one single score is not enough to indicate the story qualities. So we need multiple aspects. Uh, we have multiple as aspects in the stories. So we might need to develop multiple aspects to evaluate different uh, uh, aspects. So that's what we are doing now is use the strong narrative uh, understanding capability of these large models to evaluate stories and multiple aspects and uh, we almost finished our work. So my supervisor was uh, urged me yesterday to put it out public as soon as possible. So you will see the paper if you are still interested very soon. So the next thing I wanna do is to use the knowledge distillation to help the fine tuning models uh, like you just suggested. So as we hypothesis, the reason why GPT-2 and or bad can't generate good stories is they don't understand the titles. So I think the thing we can do is we uh, gave those hard titles to uh, GPT-3 or chat GPT and ask them to generate some examples. And we use those uh, stories or informations to give back to the smaller models to find, further fine tune it so to make it uh, understand the stories and to see if they can help them to generate better stories. So the one question we want to ask is how do we automatically define the, these hard titles? That's the further research questions. And uh, the last thing is to... Uh, so, uh, how do you in terms of knowledge based model or is it the whole 
I think it just in terms of the entities, like to say if this contains some entities that the models do not understand, that's what we want to uh, look into. Uh, one more question here. So uh, while expanding the hard titles, uh, would it make sense to actually call a search API, like a Google search or something like that to generate some candidates? Oh, uh, you mean just search online? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think, uh, yeah, we are just thinking for the automatic process, it might be easier to, uh, ask the, uh, the bigger models to generate mm -hmm. something to as a knowledge distillations to help to build the, uh, smaller models. Right. Also, one more question I had is that uh, initially you said that the smaller models like BART was fine-tuned. So yeah. how much percentage of data was used for fine-tuning? Like, was it like for three or four examples only or how much examples did you use? For uh, it should be 10,000. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 10,000. Something like oh, okay. that. Okay. Yeah, more than 10,000. Okay. Yeah. So the, the, the last thing... I want to dig into is this privacy leak analysis. So as we can see, GPT-3 sometimes paraphrase from its training data set. So we think it might leak some privacy information. So I think it's because we are giving some detailed information which confuse the, the model to say, if you want the creative writing or you just want some information retrievals. So I think there's a balance to achieve. So there's some analysis to do here. So that's all today. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, just feel free to ask. Do you have any uh, like, qualitative uh, examples for the, the human language? I am just curious. Like, How much are the copies? No, no, no. Just one thing you can borrow from the uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Yeah, I don't have any slides. So I have in my picture. Yeah, nothing because this is not my computer, so I cannot check on my on my. Yeah, yeah in the paper, yeah, but that is not a, okay. <laughs> Can I just use the? Um, I I um very much interested in yeah uh, the, the, the next direction from this research line with the more more constrained generation because right now yeah. I feel like. The task you pick is too general. Yeah. Too general and, and is exactly what GB3 uh yeah. strength, right? Because yeah. you just need to relate something coherent and interesting for without any additional constraint. So uh but that's usually not the case for um mm -hmm. for um generation type. Mm -hmm. um, so, right? mm -hmm. so I'm trying to think of the way that we can apply you know, those type of technology that I feel. But normally we have to apply mm -hmm. more constraints. Yeah. Or incorporate constraints. The easiest way is to um um to pump to uh pumping to a good model that just to be right mm -hmm. well off the uh what it does there. Um that's another question. Yeah. And one more thing that I think um uh your base model is a bit too weak, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um there are first size is is one thing, mm -hmm. but the, the model size is too small, mm -hmm. I think. But the other thing is the way that you fine tune the model. Yeah. When you just fine tune the whole thing, um, mm -hmm. right, you might face the um catastrophic forgetting, for example, if yeah. the a pre trained model and do say uh, instruction by tuning on top of that, uh, or or soft from tuning, for example, you might um, you might keep all the uh, more knowledge that the training part of the model. Yeah. Yeah, I think the question is uh, so I think there's two questions. Is the, the model is too weak, right? Mm -hmm. So Actually, these models uh, is not pure fine tuning as I shown. So it's not I picked uh, from sorry, it's not a uh, uh, I just use the uh, pure fine tuning. It's also I have the uh, as I said 
uh, the there's some approaches to help it better, mm -hmm. like uh, story planning, uh, discourse learning, and common sense reasoning. So this is also added in the fine tuning approaches mm -hmm. to help it. And we say with GPT three, uh, even though you don't have these additional approaches, it still works better. So that's one funding. For the other thing, you said is. Uh, where are you? Uh, the, the, this model is still the size is too small, and I think that's the case we we have now. Because if you really want to fine tune, because we are all from like our our uh, university labs, that's that's the best we can do. Yeah. yeah. So that's not too much we can do about that. But yeah. but uh, yeah, the other question I think is also uh very interesting is the constraint stories. Yeah, I was also uh want to do that just to dig into a more personalized story, for example, some uh, fairy tales or mm -hmm. poems, uh, just uh, not the general stories. Yeah, that's another uh, direction I want to dig into. So, thank you. So, uh, a question mm -hmm. here about uh, story generation, right? So when the generation is really long, mm -hmm. uh, have you observed like inconsistency before and after? Like kind of the line just to drift off, um, things like that. Is that kind of like evaluated? I, I sorry, I didn't understand the question. So it's a storyline, right? But the story could just drift off to some like not ah. relevant stuff, mm -hmm. and uh, that's kind of like could be a criteria to evaluate the whether uh -huh. the story is. Yeah. You mean you mean if there is a way to evaluate, uh, if the oh, oh, that's yeah, that could be an aspect to evaluate about the quality of the generated story because yeah, yeah. the topic could be just drift off. I think um, that's uh, sorry. Uh, I think that's one of the uh human evaluations. So we have the mm -hmm. fluency, coherence. So that's uh one thing in the coherence. So if you it uh, uh drift from one one topic to another topic. Uh, topic that's not coherent here but if you're asking if there is a automatically way to assess it um right uh, right that, that would be hard right yeah that, that's that's really hard. I, I, that, that would be the yeah. good topic to to dig into yeah i see i see got it you want to also find the data yeah better than yeah it's it's possible so gpt3 also provides uh, the function for you to fine tune it, but we did not do that because uh, we only want to uh, assess the few short learning capability. Mm -hmm. So that's the top, the the comparison we want to do. But yeah, it it might make sense to further fine tune GPT three as well. Like I know the instructor GPT, for example, is the one fine tuned on GPT three, right, to take better prompts. So. Yeah, maybe we can build a story like instruct a GPT, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, can I ask a question? Uh, uh, did you uh, provide uh, like a, 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 a maximum length for the for humans? Like, uh, for example, uh, did you say, uh, did you uh, tell them to generate uh, like a paragraph in a uh, in a specific length or? They just decided to, you know, generate a, a story in any, uh, you know, uh, length, like a short, medium, uh, mm -hmm. um, long one. You mean for the GPT three prompt? Did we provide the length constraint? No. Yeah, GPT. But my main question is, uh, uh, yeah, did you also provide this length constraint to humans? Oh, so uh, so. I can, uh, mm -hmm. So this uh this human stories is not uh, uh written uh, how do I put that so it's from the data set it's not we we ask a human to write it mm -hmm. oh I see I see yeah. just to quickly and then this one you're seeing is from Reddit um from the Reddit prompt subreddit so uh, usually people don't have any constraints so they just mm -hmm. write whatever mm -hmm. yeah. so so go back to your questions here's the examples. Uh, with the human story, human uh, human stories from the test data set, and the GPT three generated uh, uh, examples. Here's the ones. Uh, to me. So here's the uh, the examples we feel uh, that where 
how annotators gave higher score to GPT-3 than human. It's about, uh, what's the title? Oh, sorry, I don't know. Yeah, uh, before the SEP is the title. And uh, that's one where GPT-3 gets higher score than human, human wow. score. Uh, did you do kind of like um, a cross system evaluation? <laughs> do they think each other's model is better or things like that? Uh, I didn't understand the question. Sorry. For example, GPT three to evaluate the story that's generated by another model. Oh, uh, you and, mean using, uh, sorry? So you you mean using the GPT three's uh, generation likelihood to evaluate other models? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, do they like each other's? output okay. yeah yeah that's a that's a good thing to do yeah maybe that's a good thing to do yeah well okay. so that, that's the next piece of work that you're working on or gonna publish on archive soon right <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's <laughs> that's, a, that's the thing i'm doing right now <laughs> and we'll be on archive next month yeah. and uh, okay. if you find the changing the uh the style for example, ChatGPT, please make this informal, please make this yeah. and uh, whatever. Yeah, that, that that's, the, that's the thing I'm actually uh, trying on ChatGPT with myself is trying to uh, to see if ChatGPT can generate some personalized stories. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that would... huh? I think I remember you yeah yeah just uh, the future direction just the broad in the future directions i can do i yeah. think it's actually a challenge to make these but uh, i think they actually figure out all of it or they did some turning the so that the model actually doesn't yeah it's really a challenge to yeah, force it to go <laughs> okay. So, uh, I have a question. Sorry, I joined a bit late, but uh, I wanted to ask: uh, uh, Did you try like chain of thoughts sort of prompting in this? So, uh, for example, in a story, right? Yeah. Yeah, we we did not. So, as we mentioned, uh, our our prompt uh, is very easy, is the easiest, which is just uh, some examples. Yeah, like the chain of source prompting. Yeah, that's, I think that's the one thing you can do to provide better results. Yeah, that's the thing we want to. Right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. Size of this data set. Uh, you mean for this one we have one thousand generations? Yeah. Oh no, this this is the human evaluations. So this is just the uh, uh, uh average the for this story for the for one story and it's averaged by three annotators. I mean for this story, I probably yeah, right, like the, the top one. Who maybe lean towards that right but the human story is like you can say mm -hmm. uh, like if, if, if you ask the if you like you know, grade five mm -hmm. give the same topic to 50 students in the class mm -hmm. they would write 50 different yeah things. yeah i know uh, yeah sort of saying human is yeah is, is yeah like, mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're stacked within human which yeah is, actually you know, actually yeah that's a very interesting topic actually we have a lot of discussion in our group like what's the ultimate goal of your uh project like are you trying to generate really good stories owning owning those uh professors would like or you want to generate uh, children's stories for like six-year-old people like how 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 what's the thing you want to do here is like as you say as you I think you just mentioned for the uh, data set is the combination of the online users and they have different uh, uh, capability of writing stories yeah that's uh, that's not a very fair comparison maybe it's something to analyze. Well, I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean humans are bad it's just that yeah, yeah. Might be bad at, like, you know, I might be bad at writing <laughs> essays yeah <laughs> 
a, a five to have a five story and a two out of five story, which I should say, and ask you to generate the three out of five story. Um, and what would be the actual um, scores for the answers? Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, yeah, so when you mentioned that you have like uh, added a context and then so JHO was not recognized, right? So did you kind of like add a context so that the generation is aware of that? Uh, actually, that's uh, synthetic examples. I just want to make sure, make sure I can illustrate this uh, the 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 problems clearly actually that's not the example we have from data set so right right I see I see but but it's possible to make it contextual right kind of like you, you can uh, like a different yeah. context and I generation think so. I think so. that's what that's what we want to do later is to provide the information as an additional prompt for the as a in, in context uh, to to help the generation yeah. Right, right. And also about this evaluation, so uh, the GPD-3 uh, evaluation, right, it's all five. How robust and reliable is that? For example, if you just slightly change the text here, would it just completely have different results? I'm just like a bit not trusting too much about the scores that's given by model. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing. So we have the, so we have 20 samples. Uh, mm -hmm. We have 20 samples and we average the score so because the human evaluation is really costly, so we cannot do too much. So, so we did the significant test, which you can see we had a, a stars here means the result is significant. We also have mm -hmm. two group two group of people, and we also mm -hmm. find they are uh, consistent between these two groups. So. I think we could make a, a rather safe conclusion that the results is. Uh, uh, no, no, no. I, I'm more about uh, using like a model to automatically do evaluation, like generally yeah. how robust that is. If we kind of like slightly just change some words, is that going to be disturbed, right? Change from five to one. Uh, yeah, it's it's not about the human evaluation part. It's more oh, about yeah. using- The evaluation metrics I showed here, no, you using model to evaluate a model, how reliable that is, right? Okay, yeah. So if you, if you just change like a couple of words in the uh -huh. for example, it's going to generate an embarrassing effect. Like, okay. Right? Okay. Uh, I still didn't understand the question. So, so for example, if we uh, replace the GHO with uh -huh. another word, uh -huh. will the uh, user have prompts? And give it to the model. Uh -huh. and the model gives us a totally different story. Uh, we didn't try this. Yeah, the question is about you guys. No, no, no. So if you can go back to that. Um... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just feeling like I, I asked a question and then like so many people uh, yeah, explain it. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the yeah. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it's about this, but yeah. So actually, I did not do that, but I, but I know there's a lot of people doing that, which is also related to my current work. And so <laughs> I know for bird score, actually, uh, if you, I know for for example, for bird score, there's some words. Uh, so because it's contextual embedding actually uh it has some issues for example if you say i hate someone or i love someone actually the hate and the love even though it's completely opposite meaning actually in the embeddings embedding they are very similar so because for yeah. birth score they are just uh, comparing the token embeddings actually this two will have very good uh very similar uh results so that's yeah. one one attack for birth score and for bad score because bad scores you know it's the uh, likelihood so it will favor the high probability uh, words so if you have some words repetitive words but they are very high frequency so usually we won't think it's a high quality but for bad score they will believe this is good quality so that's mm -hmm. some hacks you can do to to this matrix mm. okay Okay. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Okay.
I mean, personally, sometimes when you see it, it's yeah, not, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And we have compared the lens here. So we use the lens as a one indicator to see if the story is complex or just less complex. Mm -hmm. Those are the average. Yeah. You mean for the human evaluation, yeah. right? Example, the paper. Yeah. One from the human is much shorter. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree there might be an issue with the lens. But yeah. Yeah, we need to yeah, we need to take that into consideration. Yeah, thank you. Uh, innovator tend to do something with and they find this pattern in this Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's really that's a lot of uh, uh, restrictions you have to do with the notators. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. I agree, that's a lot of things we can improve. So, any further? Sorry, so I have a question from the people that do the example in the paper. So, we sent the first sentence before the open is uh, from the right. Uh, no, this is just uh, the title. Yeah. So, um, is it you generate from the story or is inside the... So, the title is from the test data set. So, you just ask the GPT-3 to implement, uh, to complete from the title. So, how about the CNN data? Like, they also have the title. Yeah, they also have the title. The title. So, so, how about the prompt? So yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to know the prompts, this is the prompts we gave is something like this. So you have a prompt and the title and the completion, and then prompt. Uh, so here we only show one example. We actually provide three in the yeah. So it's about the CNN. Actually, if you do the like to to shout learn, you give them the title and then the prompts. Use. Yeah. Um, so I think it's reasonable for the model to do the information retrieval. So you talk Yeah, about yeah, about I know, I know, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that for that news, it's, it's reasonable to yeah, do yeah. To the information retrieval. Yeah. That's a, uh, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, that's the thing. I think it's not a, we, we write in the paper is a short, uh, it's like soft plagiarism because I, I don't think it's really fair because you do not, Ask them to not copy. Yeah, you might, they might, yeah, yeah, they might misinterpret as you want them to do the information retrieval and just uh, retrieve the, yeah, that's the, that's the, yeah, yeah, that's a very good uh, question. Thank you. Sorry, I have one last question. Um, so, uh, we know like ChatGPT is really good at the, or GPT three really good at generating stories, things like this, right? But from your perspective, how far the generation is from human written stuff? We kind of look into like, for example, uh, conversation generation, things like that. But to my eyes, right, generated conversation, there's still like a gap there. At least I can tell, or I can guess which is a human generate, which is machine generated. Uh, yeah. But how about story? Um, I think that's a really hard question to answer. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I don't know how 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 much gap gap is still there because I I think there are I, because I feel the the task is for itself is really hard to define like uh, we previous someone asked like what kind of what what. Uh, uh type of the stories you wanted to generate is i think it's really hard to evaluate like what's your goal you want to achieve here for story generations are you generating uh like a shakespeare level story or you just generate a six uh ch childhood story like this kind of thing i think for now at least we say for these general stories is good enough maybe mm -hmm. uh uh, maybe the future directions is you generate, try to generate novels or longer ones, or trying to make more complex stories. But at least now for this uh, few mm -hmm. sentence stories, they are fine. I see, I see. But things like a writing style, you know, like kind of like a personal 
uh, signature, the way of writing, I guess those things are still not there. It's yeah. hard. Yeah, maybe the other direction is to generate personalized story, like maybe Shakespeare mm -hmm. personalized or other, I don't know, other. <laughs> yeah. Can I jump in a bit and just sort of um, be a bit more provocative and, and say uh, uh, sort of a personalized uh, story and and, uh, and to some extent um, uh, it is kind of solved uh, by chat GPT. Um, yeah, because in, in many ways you can really get, uh, once you get a generation output from chat GPT, and we've tried this quite a bit, um, you can really get it to revise its, its story or whatever the output in a manner that you want. If you want it to be longer, shorter, mm -hmm. uh, if you want to even impersonate someone's writing style, it can also do that. Mm -hmm. um, and and so to some extent, I think if you, we're talking story length that's within its 8,000 window size, Mm -hmm. so I feel like it's kind of soft with ChatGPT that you can iteratively get it to work with you to revise to a manner that you want, to a style you want, to a storyline that you want, with characters that you want. It, it really does a really good job. Um, and, and so maybe, you know, the the, the really the, the hard ones is generating things beyond this 8,000 window that generating like a full novel is going to be really, really, really difficult. Mm -hmm. but, but otherwise, I you know, I have a feeling that ChatGPT not not just GPT, but chat GPT specifically, um, through the chat interface is really um, quite good at, at helping you to iteratively refine your story. Yeah. yeah, but in your prompt, is it kind of like instruction zero shot or you kind of give some example as in context learning? No, you, you can't, for chat GPT in particular, you, they, they have sacrificed all the in context learning uh, with the RL, uh, with the reinforcement learning that focuses on chat. So, so you can't do in context learning with chat GPT, but it is because it sacrifices all this ability to take instructions. So it is exceptionally good at zero shot, just taking human instructions. So um, in terms of engineering with, uh, you know, engineering and working with chat GPT, you should just always give human instructions and work with it. It will pretty much understand your intention most of the time. Right, right. But but it has to, to be something that the no, uh, it's knowledge no, right? In, for example, you're saying uh, getting a Shakespeare uh, kind of like style, it has to know what that uh, style refers to, right? And it does know uh, Shakespeare. In fact, it writes sonnets really, really well, much better than... No, no, no. Uh, I mean, Shakespeare is kind of like a famous... Right? Correct, correct. Yeah. yeah. So as long yeah. as it's something that's popular and, you know, it's probably captured by your, the web data, it, it, it knows it, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Cool. That's, that's all cool. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So any other questions? Okay. Let's think. Sure. Wrap up. So yeah, I think we can wrap up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> okay,